Hey, good morning. Wow, you guys sound great out there. Do you guys feel great? I mean, it's beautiful today. I was a little worried yesterday. I was like, man, is it going to continue to rain? We're probably going to have to cancel service, you know, but it didn't. God uh, removed those clouds and here we are, you know. And so I got the opportunity to do our lesson today, you know. Yeah. Awesome. You know, it's, it's a little nerve wracking, right? Like to be up here and to see all you guys. But, you know, you guys are my family, so it's not that nerve wracking. I know you guys will have grace on me, right? <laughs> But I, I definitely wanted to share a thanks to Robert, the staff, the, the elders, Doug, for giving me the opportunity to share this morning. This is a privilege to be able to preach God's word, right? Amen. It's a privilege to speak God's word. I'm going to put my timer on so I know that I only have 25 minutes to speak. Yeah, 25. I'm going to, yeah, I'm going to put 25 minutes on so I don't, nah, 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 nah. We don't do that. We go on time. So I'm going to put the timer on, and then why don't we go ahead and pray, okay? Let's pray. Father, thank you so much for this time to pray. Thank you, God, for your word. Thank you, Father, for the opportunity to speak your word, God. It's a privilege and honor to share your word with your people, God. I pray that it will inspire, that it will help us to see you better, Lord. I pray that you move in a powerful way, that your spirit would manifest itself right here today, God, and work through our hearts and our minds. Help us to feel at rest this morning. Father, as we sit here with each other, help our minds to not be racing. Help us to be present, God, with you today, Lord. We love you. It's in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 All right. So the, the, the title of my lesson is entitled, The Faith to See, The Spirituality to Be. And I have a question for you guys, okay? Got a question. Have you found it difficult to see God in the midst of a confused, distracted, and chaotic world? Again, have you, seen, have you, have you felt it, that it's difficult to see God in a confusing, chaotic, and distracted world? You know, I'm going to share a story. <laughs> I want to share a story. I remember one time when I was younger, okay, not now, when I was younger, and uh, I was attempting to cook. <laughs> and I'm Belizean. I'm, I'm, I'm Belizean. And so we like, can you guys hear me now? Okay. So I'm Belizean, and we like the food to be seasoned well. We don't like none of that bland food. We like the meat to be great. Fabian knows what I'm talking about. He's laughing. <laughs> we love the meat to be right you know and i thought hey you know what i'm saying like i got the opportunity to learn how to cook in my home my granny used to cook and show me uh my dad used to cook and show me how to you know do some things and i thought i knew what i was doing i was totally wrong <laughs> like royally wrong royally wrong so we have this uh tea it's called cena or Senna, right? <laughs> baby is laughing. We have this tea called Senna or Sina. We call it Sina in the Belizean culture. And I thought, you know what? This the Sina was in a like a little plastic wrapping, and I thought it was this regular seasoning, right? It was, you know, what I'm saying it looked like all the other seasonings, right? And if you know anything about Sina, Sina is a dietary tea. So it makes you go, you know what I'm saying? When your stomach is constipated and, you know, when your stomach is uh, upset, you drink Cena. We usually tell people in the Belizean culture, go drink some Cena, right? It'll, it'll, it'll relieve your stomach. So I thought, you know what? This is just some just regular Cena. So I, and it was in a raw form. So what I did is I put the Cena in the pot of stew thinking that, oh, it's going to taste good. And so I'm all good. I'm like, man, this is a great pot of stew. It's going to be amazing, right? And so my dad tastes the stew, his, him, him and his girlfriend. They're like, what's wrong with this stew? Like, because it's a bitter, it's a bitter taste. And they're like, what did you put in the stew? And I was like, some seasonings? And they're like, Tell, show me what the seasoning is. So I showed them what the seasoning was. And they're like, boy, like... <laughs> You put Cena in the food, all my family was jacked up, right? Like, talk about being distracted, right? And not paying attention. I royally 
messed up my family that day for a couple of days. They all had to go. It was so bad. I even messed my own self up. I was in the bathroom. I was like, wow. I did not get to cook another day in my house. They didn't allow me to cook again. Um, and so that day taught me the importance of paying attention, right? Paying attention to what I'm putting in the food. If I had seen, right, what I had put in the food or known, right, I probably would have acted differently, right? And so seeing is important, right? Seeing clearly is important, isn't it? And so I have two points, and then I have a practical, okay? And my point one is, just like the title, Faith to See. So point one is Faith to See. So if you can open your Bibles up to Matthew chapter 9. Matthew chapter 9, verses 27 to 31. I mean, that story was, man, it was a bad day that day. Really, it was. Uh, Matthew chapter 9, verses 27 to 31. Say amen when you're there. Amen. It says, as Jesus went on from there, two blind men followed him, calling out, Have mercy on us, son of David. When he had gone indoors, the blind man came to him, and he asked him, Do you believe that I am able to do this? Yes, Lord, they replied. Then he touched their eyes and said, According to your faith, let it be done to you. And their sight was restored. Jesus warned them sternly, See that no one knows about this. But they went out and they spread the news about him all over that region. What a great illustration about the faith to see, right? You know, from this passage, we learned that these men were physically blind, right? They were born blind. They didn't have the opportunity like a lot of us to to see a sunset. They didn't have the opportunity to, you know, see their children smile, perhaps. They didn't get the opportunity to, you know, see the birds flying in the air. They were physically blind. Yet, the Bible says that they had faith. They had faith. You know, they called out for Jesus and they followed him. And I think that's so profound, right? Two blind men who are blind trying to, you know, follow Jesus. Like, imagine what that would have looked like. Two blind men just trying to get to get to Jesus to follow him. They had no way of even seeing the miracles of Jesus. They didn't even see what Jesus looked like. You know, perhaps they just heard stories of, you know, hey, we have this person, his name is Jesus, and he's healing people. And they're like, man, we have to get to Jesus, right? We have to get to him to heal us because we heard that he healed others. So how did these men see but be physically blind? Like what, like, think about that. How did they see yet be physically blind? You know, I think it's faith. As the Bible says, they had faith, right? And I think sometimes that we think that seeing is equivalent to faith. Like if I see all the details of my life, right? And some of us may be going through a bit of chaos in our, in our life at, at, at the moment, right? Things are not going well in our lives. And we're like, man, like I, I need to see God. And I don't see him right now, but I, I, I want to see God. And things are chaotic for us. And we wanted to to see God move and and we're like man if if I see God then perhaps I'll have faith then I'll trust God or maybe you have a strained relationship right a strained family relationship you know and all we see is the chaos of what's in front of us you know I want to share about my brother you know recently he got diagnosed with a a pretty severe uh, mental health condition And uh, it's been challenging, to be honest, to be real. It's been challenging living with somebody who has a mental health condition. There's been some days where I'm just like, man, like, I'm frustrated. Or some days I'm angry. Some days I'm sad for him. You know, some days I'm just like, man, I just want to leave the house. I don't want to be here, you know, because it's so challenging. And so what gives us the hope that things will become better despite what we see? You know, what what motivates us or drives us to continue to give our resources, our time, our money, our energy, our hearts? You know, I think it's faith. I think it's faith. 
You know, remember when Jesus said, it's, it, you know, blessed are those that have not seen but believe. You know, these two blind men are considered blessed, you know, in Jesus' eyes because they had faith despite being able to literally see. So why is faith important? Because it gives us a window, a door to being able to see God despite the chaos, despite the, the, the distractions, despite the, you know, the confusion of our world. So what is something that you can do this week that requires a little bit more faith than sight? You know, what is something this week that you can do? And I remember last week, Robert talked about the faith of a mustard seed, right? How big is a mustard seed? It's pretty small, right? Pretty small. Jesus said, if you have the faith of a mustard seed, you can move mountains, right? You can move mountains. It just takes a little, not a lot, right? But, you know, as I was reflecting more on the two blind men, these two, also, these two blind men also d- displayed a level of spirituality that helped them to also, or to help them to continue to see God in their lives. The scripture says in verse 30 that these men were told sternly by Jesus, right? Whatever that means. Like Jesus, don't tell nobody. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> don't tell nobody about what I just did to you. What was the response of the men? They went out and told everybody in that region, right, what what Jesus had done, right? So what helped these men to continue to see God? I think it was their spiritual ability to be grateful for what had just happened. You know, when we have the spirituality and the godliness, um, we'll display a heart of gratitude that helps us to see the good things that God is doing in our lives at the moment. Right. These men or before that. Right. So there's a thing. And I I was you know, I wanted to share this. There's a thing in in therapy called reframing. I don't know if you guys have heard that, but reframing. And so I work with a lot of clients and sometimes these clients are going through a lot. Right. it's, It's easy to be negative. It's easy to be critical about stuff. And so the tool that we use is reframing so we help them to see things differently and so when we're being spiritual right it gives us a lens through how we look at the world and our situation right i don't know about you but um when i'm not being spiritual i have a hard time being grateful when i'm not living spiritually i have a hard time being grateful i feel entitled to things like ah i made this happen You know what I'm saying? Like, I'm the cause of this, right? I feel crabby and critical, right? I'm like, man, why is this not going right? And why is this not going right? Why is this not going right? You know, I live as if I'm the cause of what's happening in my life at the moment. You know, it's difficult to see God when we're not being spiritual. It's hard. When you're not being spiritual, it's hard to see God. You're not grateful. You're not, you know, you don't, you know, you don't see God. Which leads to my next point, point two, the spirituality to be. So if faith gives us an access, a window to seeing God in our lives, spirituality allows us to continue to see God. Most know that I went through a divorce um, last year or, yeah, almost a year ago. And I could talk to you about the therapy lessons that I learned, and they were great. Um, I could talk to you about all the things that I've learned along the way. I can talk to you about, you know, how I felt low and depressed. You know, I can talk to you how God strengthened me and it's because of God I'm still here. You know what I'm saying? I could talk about all of that. And all of that stuff is true, by the way, you know. But, you know, one of the things that I think is even more profound than that is the, the spirituality of many of you in the fellowship helped me to see God. The spirituality of many of you, not just some, many of you, helped me to see God when I was going through a chaotic time in my life. There are so many people that I can share about, so many people, but I'm only going to share a few. I'm going to share about my good friend, Cameron Weber. Most of you guys know that. By the way, 
Cameron Weber says that he's, he's set to come back on December 4th. He's going to be at the Sunday service on December 4th, by the way. He says he misses all of you. He, almost, he has five weeks left in his training. And so he says he misses all of you. I just recently talked to him. He's like, man, I can't wait to come home. I can't wait to be with Metro. And he's, he's waiting for all of you guys. I just wanted to let you guys know that to encourage you. But Cameron called me every single day for months and weeks while I was going through my divorce. You know, Cameron's dad, Doug Weber, I remember calling Doug some nights, right? And as most of you guys know, Doug, he works as a doctor, right? And so I'm sure he's tired coming home and listening to my call. However, he still listened and he decided to give himself and counsel me and help me through that difficult time. You know, Tian Vu, I told Tian that I would share about him, but Tian Vu invited me out to go play tennis and, and pray. Now, Tian is a beast at tennis. Let me tell you, don't let that man fool you by the way he looks at all. That man is a beast at tennis. You know, I'm not a beast at tennis at all. I'm like not even that great by far. And I remember playing with Tian, you know, at the at the nets. And I was, you know, I have a pretty strong forearm. And I would like blast the ball over the fence. And I remember Tian just looking at me and be like, bro, what are you doing? <laughs> Go get the ball. And so much so, right, like after a while, Tian is like, yeah, bro, we just got to pray now. <laughs> like we didn't even play tennis <laughs> before, bro. We just had to pray. I think Tian was discouraged. <laughs> I couldn't hit the ball inside. Like it was hard because you have to hit the ball inside the net. I just couldn't do it. You know, your spirituality not only helps you. But it can help others to see God, right? It gives other people the opportunity to see God. And let's get this right. Spirituality is not just for the mature disciple, right? Spirituality is not just for the leadership of our church here in Metro, right? Spirituality is not just for the Bible talk leader in our church, right? Spirituality is for everybody, right? It's for everybody. So how important is your spirituality? I think it's very important, right? It can make a profound impact when we're being spiritual. And this is where the, the rubber meets the road, right? Because you can't fake being spiritual. You can't fake being spiritual. You either are spiritual or you're not spiritual, right? There's no, like, in-between thing, right? You're, you know, like, I've heard this term, right? Like, faking it till you're making it. There is no faking it till you make it while being spiritual, right? You either are or you're not. You know, f spirituality takes practice and work, right? In 1 Timothy chapter 4, verse 10, it states that we are to train ourselves to be godly. Yeah. Spirituality and godliness won't just happen, right? It's like, ah, oh, well, I want to lose weight, to, you know, this week. Like, if you don't go to the gym and you don't eat right, you're not losing weight, period. It won't work, Right? It's not like you're going to get up one morning and be like, ah, I just want to love people today. Like, it just won't work that way. Or I just want to be spiritual today. Right. Like we have to train ourselves to be godly. Amen. So the question is, how is your training? How have we been training? Are we continuing to read our Bibles and pray the basics? Right. This let's start with the basis. Reading our Bibles and praying. Are we doing that every day? And it's hard, right? It's super hard when you're distracted by the world. It's hard to take some time to slow down and read our Bibles and pray. Bless you. You know, are we going to the beach or the park and getting away from the distractions of this world, right? And sitting with God just for a little bit. Not six, seven, eight hours, right? But some time to just relax with God. Are we sharing our faith? Right. We, we, we talked about, you know, Kathy, we heard the story from Casey, right, was sharing with with David and how he came out. Right. Like that can happen if we open up our mouths, if we're sharing our faith with others. Right. Are we are we giving? Right. Are we giving to God? Are we giving to each other? Right. Like, are, are we back there just sitting in the back like, oh, I'm just going to come to church today? 
I'm not really going to do much. Not this week. I'm, I'm tired, right? Like many of us are tired, right? Many of us have full-time jobs, right? Are we, are we giving? You know, Robert talked about giving our money. Are we giving our money, right? Robert talked about how, you know, since, since, since pandemic, right, money contribution has kind of diminished a little bit. Like how can we continue to give to God in a great, great way, right? So why, so why be spiritual, why do these things in the first place, right? Because it allows us to continue to see God or it allows us to continue to see God during the distractions, the chaos, and the confusion of our world. But it also gives others the opportunity to see God in us. So when you're at work, right, and the boss is calling you to make an unethical decision, what do you do then? Right. Are we being spiritual and standing up for righteousness and say, no, I'm not going to do that because I want to do the right thing before God. You know, I know many of our family members are perhaps not Christians. Right. And they don't want to come to church, but they see God in your life. They see the spirituality in your life. Right. I want to encourage you to continue to be a light to your family, continue to do the right thing, continue to show them Jesus. Don't take for granted your spirituality because it can make a profound impact not only on yourself but on others just because you've decided to be spiritual you know i want to share about a brother before we close out i want to share about a brother where's ludum at where's ludum ludum so i told that brother he doesn't really like to be shared about a lot but i'm going to share about him you know i had a um you know i had a yes he's right there ludum campos right and so I was having D time with Ludum uh, a couple weeks ago, and Ludum's in the in the in the transition of jobs right now, so he doesn't technically work, but he's looking for work. And we were having D time, and this brother told me, "Hey, you know what? I feel tempted to cut back on my giving, on my tithes. I don't want to give the same amount because I'm not working right now." But he's like, "You know what? I'm not going to do that." I'm going to continue to give to God, and I'm going to trust that God's going to work in this situation, right? And that right there profoundly impacted me majorly because I see this brother who doesn't have a job right now who's like, man, I'm going to still give to God. I'm still going to be spiritual. I'm still going to have the faith to trust God even despite my circumstances. And because of that, he has the opportunity, hopefully, be praying for him, he has the opportunity to land a great job to make even more finances. But like, how does that happen, though? It's because he had faith to see God. He had the spirituality to trust God, even despite his circumstances. And so I really want to lift up Ludum for his spirituality and his faith. And so what's the practical today? The practical is don't fake it, faith it. Don't fake it, faith it, right? You like, again, you can't fake being spiritual, right? We talked about that. You either are or you're not. And so I hope as we continue to be spiritual, as we continue to have faith, that we can see God in our lives. So we started off with a question. Have you found it difficult to see God in the midst of a confused, distracted, and chaotic world? And we had two points. The faith to see, you know, which faith opens the window and door for us to see God like the blind man. But our spirituality to be, being spiritual is what, us, what helps us to continue to see God in our lives. Spiritually not, spirituality not only helps you to see God, but it helps others to see God in us. And the practical was, don't fake it, faith it. And who exemplified this better than the Lord Jesus in his life and his death? Who knows all about chaos? Who knows all about confusion? Who knows all about the distractions of this world better than Jesus? Jesus was rejected by the Jews. He was deserted by his close followers. He was condemned to die, right? He, was, he felt left alone by his father. But despite all that Jesus felt and experienced, he still had the faith to see God through it all and chose to be spiritual despite of it. Let's pray. 
Father, thank you so much for this time to pray as we uh, take communion this morning. Uh, thank you so much for the example of Jesus, God, and his faith to continue to see you despite the circumstances in his life, God, and how even being hung on a cross, God, he was still spiritual and decided to trust you despite all that he went through, God. I pray that we can feel encouraged by that as we follow his example, Lord, in our own individual lives. Lord, we love you. Thank you. It's in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you for joining us. I hope this has been educational and inspiring for you. If you'd like to know more, please join us by going to study.laicc.net, and we'll be happy to contact you and help you in any way we can.